Welcome once again on this last Sunday of May, Pentecost Sunday, as we join together in virtual community for worship. Uh, coming together wherever we are, centering ourselves, coming together in community to worship God in both word and song. And we hope that as we go through the service that you will join us in singing the hymns. Uh, the words will be on the screen and we invite you wherever you are to, to, to sing along with us. So please do. Spirit of God, we long to be open to your presence in our church and in our lives. As we light this candle, this symbol of you among us, fill us with your wind and fire that we might be enlivened again. Come, Spirit, come into our worship, into our church, into our very selves. Amen. We are joined together as a community in worship. Once we walked the hillsides and pathways. Then, in fear, we hid in an upper room. News of Jesus' resurrection stunned and awed our souls. We didn't know what to believe. On this day long ago, God's Holy Spirit inflamed the hearts of those who had hidden in fear. They were encouraged to go and proclaim God's good news to all the world. May God's Holy Spirit inflame our hearts and stir us from apathy and complacency to energy and enthusiasm to serve God in this world. Amen. Let us join our voices together as we sing Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness.
us pray. Almighty God, your Holy Spirit came to Jesus' disciples hidden in an upper room in Jerusalem. A violent wind and tongues of fire were the symbols of a new thing happening in their lives. May your Holy Spirit burst into our lives today, encouraging and inspiring us to proclaim boldly the good news of Jesus Christ who offers healing and hope to all people. Yet sometimes we don't think that we are ready. Patient God, it is easy for us to hide in the upper rooms of our lives, to let the world go by and not acknowledge your presence. But you have challenged us to come alive again with your love and words of healing mercy. Forgive our hesitant witness and our complacent spirits. Heal our fears and our wounds. Help us to be agents of healing and hope for others. Challenge and inspire us to overcome our feelings of inadequacy and remind us that you have called us beloved and have given us what we need to proclaim your good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do not be afraid. God's Holy Spirit brings you healing, comfort, and hope. You are being prepared to serve God in some mighty ways. Rejoice. God's Holy Spirit is with you always. Thanks be to God. Amen. We're going to sing once again a Pentecost hymn. So I wonder if I were to twist this, or try to twist this, and try to fashion a balloon animal out of this, would it work? I don't think it'll work very well, and I'm not sure why it doesn't work very well, but I can't really make much out of this the way it is. I have another balloon here, and this is the type of balloon that we used to have when I was younger, and we used to play a game at home where you would have the balloon and you would have to do whatever you could to keep it off the floor, so it couldn't touch the floor. And so you bounced it around, and as you see, this balloon doesn't really do that. And I wonder, what is missing in these balloons that would allow them to do what we would like them to do? What's missing? 
What's missing is air or breath. <laughs> Put a little bit of air in this, and this balloon can do more than just be a plastic balloon. If I were to fill it up all the way and tie it, then I could play the game that I played as a child with this balloon. If we blew this balloon up, we could fashion this into a balloon animal. So what does this have to do with Pentecost? When the Spirit came to the people gathered in, those, in that room in Jerusalem, I wonder if maybe it's the idea that we need to be filled with the breath of God to do what we need to do as God's people. Just as these balloons need to be filled with breath to do what they're made to do. And so in some ways, we might be an empty balloon without the Spirit of God, not really doing what God asks us and calls us and challenges us to do. So I want you to think about that as we go through the rest of the service. We're going to sing again on Pentecost They Gather. chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
divided in tongues as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medeas, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pam Pamphylia, Egypt and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken of through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, that your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and your men, young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. So in the vein of full disclosure, I must say that at the beginning of this week I had a meditation all set and ready to go for today. And I think that it was a very fine meditation, if I do say so myself. What happened next has only happened a couple of times in my life, but they are important times. They are those times when something has happened that my entire being is on edge, and there is what I might say is a disturbance in my soul, and the only way to address it seems to be to discard what I wrote and to follow where this disturbance leads me. The other dis statement that impacted me this week was a question by someone that I know about whether or not I adapt what I bring to the community as world events unfold. And I was sure that I did. And so this is what happened this past week. As we moved through the week, this disturbance in my soul became larger, more pronounced, until finally I wrote a completely new meditation for today. We still have the same reading, it is the Pentecost reading from the book of Acts, and it is the same story that we remember, as we have heard it a number of times before. The story of Pentecost is taking place in Jerusalem during the festival of Pentecost, or the feast, feast of the Weeks, a prominent feast in the life of Israel, celebrating the giving of the Sinai Law, when many persons of Jewish descent had descended on Jerusalem for a time of feasting. It was a time to celebrate the glory of God. And yet, in our story, for those gathered in their place, I can only imagine what they were going through. You see, it, it was not long before this that the Messiah, their Messiah, the one that they were sure had come to save them, to usher in a new world, had been brutally crucified on 
on the cross as a common criminal, and after appearing to them, ascended. So for many of them, I am sure they felt lost. I'm sure that there were many questions about what they were going to do next and how they were going to do it. And it is in this context that this story takes place. And so we have this group of individuals who might be feeling lost and very much alone and all of a sudden there is the sound like the rush of a violent wind. Now many people who have survived a tornado say that the sound of the wind in a tornado is like the sound of a freight train coming through their house. And I wonder, I wonder if this might be what they had experienced. And if it was anything like that, I would have been terrified and running for cover. And then tongues of fire appeared among them and rested on each of their heads. At this point, as the story goes, they are filled with the Holy Spirit, fulfilling what John the Baptist said when he baptized with water, saying, but one will come who will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. And we have one of those moments, those sacramental, sacred moments when, bam, the God of the Trinity and the Holy Spirit breaks into the world and brings the kingdom then and there to those present. And at this point, they begin to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Once this happens, a crowd gathers and the crowd becomes confused when they hear these individuals talking in the different tongues, accusing them of partaking of the new wine. Actually, if I think about it, I am sure that they were probably accused of being more than just drunk. But who can blame this crowd? hearing what they thought they were hearing, and then Peter comes out and addresses the crowd of bystanders and reminds them of the words spoken by the prophet Joel. And so in this story, here is this group of people locked up in a house who are afraid and alone, surrounded by disbelief, scorn, and derision. Pentecost story is a story of the coming of the Holy Spirit on people, and for many, it is also the story of the beginning of the church. And I think that in some ways, this is where this disturbance in my soul was coming from. And it has focused itself on one question. What really is the church? This question has been in the media a lot lately, what with the president down south telling state governors that they need to open back up the churches, and then this same sentiment being echoed by some right here in Canada. This has made many of us who minister in churches to start to vocalize our understanding that in reality, throughout this entire time, the church has not been closed. It has only been the building that has been closed. The church continues to do the work of church just in a different way. Some people might actually say in a more authentic way. And this is part of what our Pentecost story is about. It is about the beginning of the church, but not as we know the church. It was the beginning of a group of people who went out into the world spreading the good news of God's love to the world. And we continue to do that whether we are meeting in a building or not. The early church had no building. They met in homes, in parks, in town squares. They lived out in the world. That was the church. There is more to the story than just the beginning of the church. It is a story of the Spirit. The Spirit of God that enlivens those present and sent them out into the world. It is a story of the power of the Holy Spirit. 
as followers of Christ. We are called to be open to the Spirit in our own lives and to follow that Spirit. And this is what that we, this week has been for, for me. I have felt the Spirit move within me, disturbing me greatly, and I am moved by it. The early believers felt that they were alone and afraid, and the Spirit came to them and enlivened them to move out into the world. They were persecuted and ostracized, but the Spirit sustained them. That is what the Church is. The Church are those who are enlivened by the Spirit. They then go out speaking truth to the world, even in the face of opposition and persecution. This was another part of this, the disturbance in my soul this week. I saw the videos and pictures from Minneapolis this past week and the murder of George Floyd. And I asked myself, how could I not say anything as a Christian? How can we not say anything as a church? But sometimes it is easy for us to find reasons not to say something, isn't it? Because the reality is that these types of things don't just happen south of the border, they happen here as well. And I am ashamed to admit that a number of weeks ago I was driving through downtown and I saw on the sidewalk at least four law enforcement individuals kneeling on one indigenous man, kneeling on his back and his neck. And I told myself that I was in the center lane of four lanes of traffic on Main Street so I wouldn't be able to stop. And really, I didn't know what had happened, so who was I to get involved? Who was I to get involved? What does it mean to be involved? Can it be that it is our call to be speaking out against the racist institutions in our society that continue to perpetuate institutionalized violence? Is it about speaking out in support of our marginalized brothers and sisters? Reverend Terry Cord Owens, General Minister and President of the Disciples of Christ USA, a denomination that we are in full communion with as the United Church of Canada issued the following this past week. I want a church that loves so courageously that we will stand up and insist that the killing of black and brown people must stop and will work to remove those in office who fail to enact laws and policy accordingly. I want a church that loves so radically that we are always putting up chairs to make room for more, always leaving empty chairs at the table, expecting that many more will come, turning no one away. I want a church that loves so generously that our priority will be the elimination of poverty, to ensure that everyone has enough to eat safe and decent housing, health care, a living wage and quality education that is not based on your zip code, or in our case, your postal code. I want a church that loves so creatively that we are willing to dismantle structures, traditions and processes that dishonor humanity and marginalize any among us. I want a church that loves so completely that we are not satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. I want a church that follows Jesus and is therefore committed to work for all of this. Let's get to work, church. 
I believe that this is what the Spirit enlivens us to do, to really be the church in the world. We are challenged out of the comfort of our own lives to move to difficult places, to stand in solidarity with those who are facing racism based on the color of their skin, discrimination based on their religious beliefs, their culture, their gender, their sexual orientation. Pentecost is the idea of God bursting into our world to enliven the world, to challenge the world to live into God's world today. It is really about being the church. But that means in reality, it is about our actions as we move out into the world. For if we don't, then there will be many more George Floyds in the world who are killed because of institutionalized racism and discrimination that we have built over the centuries. And so what will we do? Will we speak these truths? Will we speak out against racism, xenophobia, homophobia, gender discrimination, all discrimination on this? This day when we celebrate the founding of who we are called to be as church. Once again in prayer and our response to the prayer will be we lift up our prayers to you let us center ourselves as we become God's people in prayer for the gift of your spirit in our lives and in our church we offer our prayers to you we lift up our prayers to you for the gifts that you give to each of us to create your beloved community here on earth we offer our prayer of thanks we lift up our prayers to you. For all of creation, that it may be honored and preserved and protected, we offer our prayer to you. We lift up our prayers to you. For the leaders of our nation and all nations of the world, that they might be guided with wisdom and understanding and committed to act in ways that bring your presence and peace, we offer our prayer to you. We lift up our prayers to you. 
for all the places where there are wars and rumors of wars, for those places where hunger gnaws, for those places ruled by oppression and injustice, for those places where hatred overcomes love. We offer our prayer to you. We lift up our prayers to you. Where dreams have died and visions are squelched, renew their spirits with your passionate fire. We offer our prayers to you. We lift up our prayers to you. For all who are ill, whether in body, mind, or spirit, and we lift up in prayer to you, especially Marlene McKay, Pat McHewitt, Susan Smallwood, Colleen Gates, Rob, Beverly Ryman, Tristan, Ken, Lindsay Carswell Fenia, Reese Carswell, Diana Johnson, Amanda Barber, Sheila Bradley, Haruko Miata, Janice Scott, Kim, Brian Lizarko, Norma, Elaine Ramsharan, Bert Andrews, Joyce Muir, Lorna Rybuff, Lillianne Cote, Paulette Cote, and Peter Chekrin, and the Ludlum family on the passing of Lewis. For all who mourn, whether the loss of loved ones, the loss of a job, or the loss of faith, fill them with your spirit of compassion and strength and healing, that they might know that they are never alone. We offer our prayer to you. We lift up our prayers to you. And for all that you have given and will yet give, we give you thanks. We offer all of our prayers to you, loving God. Hear us as we continue to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Closing hymn today is She Comes Sailing on the Wind.
forth now as a Pentecost people filled with the Spirit, dreaming dreams and seeing visions of God's possibilities. We go forth knowing we are beloved and blessed by a God who never leaves us alone. Go to be surprised by the Spirit in all that you do and everywhere that you go. We go claiming our identity as Pentecost people, people of wind and fire, dreams and visions, people filled with the most amazing and transforming Spirit. We go forward with God.